Hi, and welcome to another edition of Jules Voto's Photo Focus. I've been doing a lot of videos on old manual focus cameras and how they work. And on a lot of those cameras, and a lot of them date from the 60s and early 70s, the meters don't work. And I recently did one, I think it was on the Pentax Spotmatic 2, and uh, one of the viewers left a comment, why don't you do a video on how we can use handheld meters, either an actual handheld meter, a, a light meter, or an app for the phone. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain how handheld meters work, how to use them, and also the app for the phone. So uh, we're going to start out with the regular handheld meter. Okay, this is a Sekonic L308X. And I think I paid about $215 for this several years ago. Now a handheld meter, most handheld meters, can be used in two ways. They can measure reflected light. Okay, so you aim it at the subject. That works the way the meter in your camera works. It measures reflected light. Or you can move this hemisphere over here, this white milky thing, and measure incident light. And incident light is the light falling on the subject. So I'm going to show you how it works both ways, okay, using it both ways, and then we'll look at the uh, app for the phone. And by the way, those apps for the phone, uh, the one I have, I think it's, what is it called here? Let me get this on. It's called Light Meter, and I have the pro version. I think I paid three bucks for it. There is a um, free version, and I forget what the difference is, but for three bucks, why not, right? Maybe a little more now. Okay, so the first thing you do with a light meter is you turn it on. <laughs> nice thing with this, it only takes one AA battery. It uses, I believe, silicon blue cells, so it's very responsive, has no memory like the old CDS cells do. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to set your film speed in the meter. So this has an ISO button. I'm going to press it and set it to 400, all right? You can then select the exposure time you want to use, you know, your shutter speed. So I'm just going to select the 60th of a second. When using this for refle measuring reflected light, it measures about a 30 degree area. So you want to make sure you're aiming the meter at the most important area of the subject that's like a medium tone. You don't want to aim it at something white or something black you'll get an inaccurate reading. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. So I'm going to take this meter and I'm going to press the button. Now, I don't want to create a shadow on my subject here, right? So I'm going to get low. My lights, I have two LED lights aimed at the mannequin. And I'm just going to aim this meter, press the button, release it. And it's giving me a reading of a 60th of a second at F2.2. Okay, so I would set that in my camera take the picture. The thing with light meters is they're calibrated to give you an 18% gray. So that usually works out fine. However, if you're metering, like I said earlier, if you're metering something white or something black, you may get an inaccurate reading. So if I set my camera to a 60th of a second at 2.2, I should have a decent exposure. Now you could change the shutter speed on the, let's say I wanted to use a 30th of a second. I want to get more depth of field. That would give me 30th of a second at 3.2. Okay, understood? Okay, so what happens if I set the meter for an incident reading? And to do that, I just move this hemisphere over, over the light metering cell, so that it's going to pick up the light falling on the subject, okay? This thing is like half a circle, right? So we're going to make sure we are not creating a shadow. I don't want to block one of these lights and take a reading. I want to make sure I'm back here. And you know, if you had a portrait subject and they were sitting on a chair, you could go behind them and put the meter in front. So I'm just going to aim this towards the camera. Press the button. And I get, oh, I had changed it. Uh, sorry about that. I'm getting a reading of a 60th of a second at 2.8. So a little bit different reading. An incident reading as long as you do it properly, is usually more accurate than a reflected light reading. Now, when I took that reflected reading, there were, it could have been reading, you know, maybe a little too much of these lenses, which are dark. And that's why that reading was a little bit, called for a little bit wider lens opening. 
So 60 at 2.8, all right, I know I'm blocking the light, let's do it again. Right, 60 at the 2.8. Now, I want to show you something. Let's say, let's put this here. All right, and now I'm going to set this back to reflected light reading. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read, take a reading of each of these segments of this card here. Okay, so I have it set for reflected light, trying not to cast the shadow. I get a 60 at the 5.6. Now I'm going to read the gray. I get a 60 at the 3.2. Now I'm going to read the black. I get a reading of a 60 at the 0.9, so less than F1. So what does that tell us? That if the meter sees all this white, it's going to give you a false reading. The meter thinks it's a lot brighter than it really is. Same thing with the black. It's going to tell you to open up your exposure. So if you took the reading off of the white and then took a picture of this mannequin head, your picture is going to be underexposed. If you took a reading of the black and took a picture of the mannequin head, it's going to be overexposed. If you took a reading of the gray, and took that picture, it's going to be properly exposed. So reading directly off of a gray card, off of an 18% gray, is going to give you, most of the time, the same exact reading as if you used an incident reading. Now this meter will also do flash metering. You could set it to do flash metering, and when you do flash metering, you should always use the incident reading. So if I had two flash units set up, let's say, on the subject, I would do the same thing. I would press the button, fire the flash, and it would give me the proper aperture to set for flash. All right, so what does... Okay, so what about the app for your phone? All right, so you download the app, and um, it has a little window here, so you aim it right at the model, I've, I've already set the film speed to 400, and we're going to take a reading. And it's given me a reading of, what did I use before, 60th? Uh, it's about a 60th at F2. So let's check this one again. And guess what? It's very close. This is giving me, let's take it again, at 2.2. So it seems to be pretty accurate, at least in this in these lighting conditions. All right, so not a bad way to go, but you know, you can't take an incident reading. Okay, I want to jump right in here and make a correction. You can take an incident reading. When I was taking the pictures for this video, after the video had been completed, actually it was completed the day before, and I noticed in the upper right of the light meter app, a little button, and it says I and R. So I took that to mean incident and reflected, and sure enough, it is. Now, I apologize for not knowing that, but I have had this app on my phone for a while. I think I used it one time, so I'm not very familiar with it, but uh, I'm glad to report that you can do incident. So you just press that button that just toggles between incident and reflected, and you can see that button in the red box, and uh, right now it's set for incident. You could see in the center of the meter, right below the word light meter, you could see that milky white looking disc. So you can do incident light readings with this app. Okay, so back to the video. And you, again, what you're going to do is just aim the meter at your subject. Again, trying not to cast the shadow. I'm, I may be casting a shadow here. So what I would do is get low, so I'm not, and right in the center of the dial on this app, it's showing me what it's reading. So I press measure, and right now it's giving me a 60 at the 2.8. And let's do the same with this. Now this is reading a wider area 
Actually, it's very close. It's 60 at the 2.5, so it's a third of a stop off. And no two meters, usually no two meters, are going to meter exactly the same. All right, so I hope this helps. Uh, and again, just keep in mind, when you're taking a reading with a handheld meter, if you're doing it in reflected mode, be careful of what you're metering. If you're metering a person, let's say I was at the beach. I'm sitting in my beach chair. My back is to the ocean. And if I took that reading with that meter, at which reading 30 degrees from camera position, I would be seeing a lot of that sky and sand and, and water behind me. And that would inflate the reading. It would, let's say, give me a reading of, I'm just going to pick a number out of the blue here, let's say 1 1 25th of a second at f11. But now if I come in closer and meter me, the subject, it may give me a reading of 1 1 25th of a second at f5.6, which would be the appropriate reading. Because if I went with that reading from camera position and it sees all that bright light, I would be like a silhouette. Okay, I'm sure you run into situations where you have something really bright behind the subject, a really bright background. The meter reads too much of that background. It's going to give you an improper reading. Same thing if I was in front of a black curtain and that meter saw that black curtain, it would say, open up, give it more exposure, and I would be overexposed. Okay, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions concerning this, concerning handheld meters, there's a ton of them out there. Um, you know, just look at the, one of the larger uh, camera stores, the B&H or Adorama. There, there's a bunch of them listed. There are also spot meters available that read as small as one degree. They usually have a viewfinder, so you could then be very selective from camera position as to what you are reading. So if you're doing that example of me at the beach, you would put it right on my face or on my shirt or whatever and take a reading, being sh making sure not to aim it at the sky behind me. So uh, they're more expensive. Spot meters are more expensive. I'll tell you the truth, I'm not even sure who makes them anymore. Minolta used to make one, Soligor, uh, Pentax, but again, I'm not sure who's making them. I'm sure you can still find them. Probably Sekonic and um, some of the other larger light meter manufacturers may have a spot meter. So if you have any questions on anything I talked about today, please leave your question in the comments below or send me an email. I'd be happy to answer your questions. I hope this has helped. So don't fret if you have one of those old cameras with a non-working meter. Based on what you learned here today, you could just go pick up a handheld meter or for almost no money, get an app for your phone, and you'll be able to get great exposures. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Monday and Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you next time.